Hello Internet! Today we have an R9 272GB from MSI, with no video output. Let's take it apart and see if we find what's causing the blackout. As usual, I'll check for resistance in key areas such as 12 volt, where we have kilo ohms, 3.3, fourth pin to the left from the notch is around 2.5 kilo ohms, 12 volt coil here measures the same as the one in the PCI slot, VDDC phase are all 16 ohms, that's pretty normal, 0 0.9 volt phase is roughly about 350 ohms, which is also good. VDDCI phase 207 ish. That's normal. Next, I'll check the PEX reset. That's the first spin to the right from the notch. That one is checked in the diode mode with the positive to the ground and the negative to the pin. 600 plus voltage drop is a healthy reading. Swap the pros to check for a clock reference. Second and third pin to the left from the notch. Both show same reading. First pair of the data line is checked exactly the same way, except on the back we measure it after the capacitors. And on the front, the first data line is checked at the slot. There are no capacitors there. To save a little bit of time, I will test the remaining data lines with this uh, data line tester, and it all seems good. Okay, let's power it on and see what it does. Some cards show no sign of life unless external cable is plugged in. With that there, we get roughly just under an amp, and that's a good sign. Most cards draw anywhere from half to 1.5 amp. Latest 3090s can probably go up to 2 amps. So when you limit the power on your power supply, be sure to not exceed that number. If card is attempting to consume more than 2 amps, something is wrong. Ok, everything seems to be normal, let's plug it in and see what happens. I don't know if you can tell, but I get no image coming out of this card. Instead, the monitor says out of range. Let's switch motherboard to use internal GPU as a main display adapter and see what we get. Ok, so I boot it into Windows using onboard video adapter. Let's open the device manager and see if R270 is showing up. It appears that Windows has given this card a generic driver and it shows error code 31. When I tried to download and install the drivers, the installer gave me this error. Looks like it's not identifying the card either. I guess the next step is to check the BIOS. Sometimes people flash them with garbage in order to gain more performance. Basically trying to put a racing fuel into a Toyota Corolla and expecting it to work. Eh, not for long. Ok, so I've connected my flash tool to the chip and it seems to have no problem reading it. However, after writing it, it fails to verify. So my guess is the flash chip is bad. Temporarily, I installed a donor chip from GTX 1070, which is only 1.8 volt versus 3.3. That's a very bad idea because it will get hot very quickly, but at the very least, it'll help us determine whether or not we need a new BIOS chip, or something else is wrong.
Okay, great. We get a picture at this time. But the driver still doesn't recognize the cards for some reason. After trying different BIOS, one finally worked and the drivers were installed and it was time to assemble the cart and run some tests. All tests seemed to be running smooth, temperatures were stable and all seemed well until the image went black and I landed on the BIOS screen with these green lines. Okay, that looks like a memory problem, so let's check that and see what we find. Using T-Server, at first listing all available cards does show that 270 is there and I should be able to run my test as usual. But if I navigate into that folder, I get the error saying that there's no such folder. So what I need to do is, I need to go to a different folder called T. So if we do the list there, 270 is also showing up, but this time I'm actually able to navigate there. Inside there we have a T server, previous log file which we need to delete. ls one more time to see the log file is no longer showing up and we're ready to proceed with typing these test commands as usual. Once test is complete, it says that we have a problem on the channel B. Note that on these older cars, memory banks are labeled as A, B, C, D, E, F, G instead of A0, A1, B0, B1, etc. So in our case, it's B. This chip right here, this is the chip we need to replace. Pro tip, when you're cleaning the pads, I would strongly advise you to wipe along the length of the wick, like that. If you wipe across the length of the wick, you run the risk of ripping off the pads. Haven't I done that before? Once chip was removed, I run the memory test again to make sure the error will point to that same channel, and it did. With a bunch more errors this time, because the chip was removed, obviously. All that's left now is to solder on your chip, let the cart cool down, try if it produces a picture, and it does. Now let's run the memory test one more time to make sure it passes, which it does. Okay, device manager recognizes the card with no errors. Obviously, you know by now that the test is not complete unless we run a few gaming engines and let the card to run for some time, ensuring it does not crash when it's fully warm. This is it for this video. I hope you guys learned something today and if so, please give this video a like, subscribe for more repairs and I'll see you later. Goodbye.